welcome to another part and this part or from now on now we're gonna think about more game friendly approaches or like i mentioned before the text right now is also just drop tree so not really what, what we would prefer for a game and also we want to think about how to make like a trim texture so we want to create like a normal map for the edges so maybe so it feels like there are bevels and, and round edges so it makes a bit more high quality i'm going to start off with the first part which is going to be more about the trim texturing part so i'm going to go to the full process of making trim textures and doing some other techniques to just approach uh, the creation of trim texture but also applying the exact uv coordinates and so on to specific spaces now for the trim itself so i'm going to keep it in this network and we're going to start with a basic uh, grid here so uh, trim sheet is is made out of just a bunch of like lines and strokes and, and uh, shapes and then we will um, capture the normal map and we will put those uv in, in certain areas i'm going to keep a quite simple trim sheet like there are, if you if you would google trim sheets or look around um how how people have used trim sheets before they can get a bit more complicated i'm going to keep it very simple by um, making a couple of uh, just tileable strokes uh, for normal maps so that's why i'm going to start with the grid making it one by one so it's easier to bake in a moment and for the amount of rows and columns i'm going to set this to two by four um, each of them will be a different material so if you remember i had some wood so i need to cover uh, wood i need to cover some metal uh, and I also need to cover the, um, the board uh, material where you can write on with, uh, with caulk. Now, we don't necessarily need uh, even spacings for it. So I'm going to uh, click on number two on my keyboard into editing mode. And I can start now, press T to move things around. So it will spawn an edit node. So you can also place the edit node yourself. The metal itself, uh, there, we don't have that much metal pieces. So we'll just make like one bigger stroke out of that. We have a bit more wood and the board material, so we'll keep that a bit more spaced out like so. So the wood part will be a bit bigger and then we have that last part. So I will do a blast node uh, on these pieces. I will blast uh, this into individual polygons. So here uh, we can have the metal part, for example. Um, this is the, the wooden part, the wooden material, and this will then be the board material. So first um, you have the metal part. I'm going to divide this stroke into multiple smaller strokes. I will do this a bit more manually since usually a term sheet is something you want to control a bit more. And I will go into a modeling tool here. We're going to switch to poly modeling. So when we press the C button, we have our modeling tools by, by default. So we will mainly use the edge loop. So we will add at the beginning here, we will add a small edge loop like so just something that's not too large. Then we're going to add another edge loop that's a bit bigger, maybe double the size or more. And then again, same here. So add another one, double the size or more. And I think that's maybe already good enough. So if I generate um, a metal piece, I have enough texture to tile this on the metal pieces. Then this is done. Same here then for uh, the wooden part. So for the wood material, I'm going to do the same slices. So I'm going to add a very tiny stroke here at the beginning. Going to maybe make another one that's maybe a little bit bigger. Another one that's maybe significantly bigger. And then here was something that's like, um, like recently, yeah, something like this. Maybe even maybe even like halfway. Something that has a decent size. And I will leave it like this. So we have like a few different size variations. So whenever, whatever board shape I generate, I have roughly something that could match it. It's not going to be perfect. Like this trim sheet again, is not going to be the most perfect one out there, but it will do for these simple boards. And then the same here for that, uh, uh, the board material. So here, small cut over here, bigger cut over here and a uh, larger one. Oh much one over here and then maybe one here roughly in the middle like so so we have enough variation again for that to cover we can also give the simple material colors uh, or just like a simple color so let's say 
uh, red, uh, green, and blue, so RGB. So let's connect it like that. Gonna match uh, or merge them again. And we now have the, our three different uh, sort of like strokes or trim sheets. Now we want to add a small bevel on these. And this can be quickly done by um, what I usually do is like uh, split the primitives. Um, so split uh, primitive nodes. I'm going to disable here by attribute. So all the primitives are now individually from each other. Then I will do an extrude node. So poly extrude. Like that. I'm going to extrude it uh, upwards. So here. Extrude it upwards and do an insert here. Doesn't have to be that much. Um, maybe I can make it even a bit lower, just a little bit, and then we just do like a bevel. Now for the beveling, we can choose to bevel everything, like you can see here. Like um, this is beveling every single part. But we can also, for example, say that um, get the top front group here, and we can say only bevel the front group here. So now the, the corners are still quite sharp, if you would like that. So it's up to you if you want to bevel everything or only the corners. So now we have a trim sheet that looks like this. So we just have the bevel. Uh, we can also apply a normal. Uh, probably want to recalculate the normals with the face area method. So you can see it looks a bit better. And we are basically ready to bake this out. So we have these round, uh, round edge into a normal map. What I would go for my low poly, so this in theory is my high poly, and I want to bake this down into one flat shape. So I will use UV projection, and I will use my original plane that I had here. This will be my um, capturing of the low poly. I will need to align my projection like so. I will also enable here the UV checker, and I will double check if I can uh, read this properly. So if it's not mirrored, we do maps baker making this into a normal map so apply uh, your low poly your high poly and then the only thing left to do is basically say i want to have like let's maybe say 2k resolution then uh, we want to enable the normal map i'm also probably going to enable output vertex color because in substance i will uh, make the actual wood surface structure and we're going to go into detail on that um but that's usually like a masking uh, material. Then what we want to double check as well is uh, here uh, we have the cage option. So this is how far uh, we will bake. So you can see that if we uh, raycast something in the bake, we will go pretty far from our shape. So we don't need that amount. So we need something like this. And once that is done, so we have a normal map color. Uh, we just hit render and uh, we're going to wait for a moment. And as you see, I have now this as normal. So in theory, maybe I should maybe rotate this 90 degrees. Uh, I can just do it here in uh, the windows. I actually want it to be like this, um, but I probably want, to, I'm going to do it in Houdini and then the rebake. But you can see like we just have the normal map like we would expect to, and we have the mask, ma uh, mask as well. So in, in, for example, Substance or Unreal, we can use this to um, layer the different material types. So I might, uh, like I mentioned here, uh, rotate this. So I can rotate this like 90 degrees uh, and bake again, for example. So for me, that now works. I have it in the other direction. So that was this part. Uh, this part just was purely about making this texture. So you have that as well. And like I mentioned before, uh, you can now use the mask uh, that uh, RGB mask to, for example, apply a wooden, metal, and uh, chalkboard uh, structure uh, in, in, in an LBD or color map, so we can use that in real. So that's what I did with that mask. So it's up to you how you did this. You can just do it in Photoshop as well, or you can do it in uh, Substance Painter, or you can try to do it here in Houdini as well with cops. Um, but it's up to you how you can get this texture. Um, it's just about the ID that we basically combine all, all the materials into one texture so we don't need to have uh, multiple material IDs and so on. So that was it for this video. Hope, hope to see you in the next one.